Так, на следующий спикер у нас Энтони. Энтони у нас из Америки. У него сейчас, кажется, только светает. У нас уже темнеет. Я буду помогать со слайдами. Мы все, что смогли, перевели на слайдах. Но Энтони будет выступать чисто на английском. Синхронного перевода мы делать пока не будем. Надеемся, что многое будет понятно. Что будет непонятно, можно задать в конце. Энтони, uh, I'll be helping uh, switching the slides. So you just okay. let me know. Just say click or whatever, and uh, I'll just switch to the next slide. All right. Uh, well, my name is Anthony Sturpey, and I am a high school English teacher and Apple Distinguished Educator. And welcome to a webinar that I like to call the Empathetic Educator. Uh, next slide. So, I just want to start by helping everyone see how a number of our kids see the world and distance learning. Uh, this was a video created by Kendall Atterbury, a student at New Rochelle High School, and she was in the first containment zone that was declared in the United States. And you can start the video. <laughs> So this is how our students see the world, some of them. Uh, I believe everything will be okay, but from the tone and messaging, you can see how some of our students see the world. They believe it's dire, it's an awful future, and we, and we need to be empathetic and compassionate of how they are experiencing the world. Next slide. Uh, for many of us, we did not ask to be distance teachers and our students did not ask to be distance learners. Next slide. I want to show you a video I made for my fellow educators around the globe. And you can start the film. When you are distance learning, we don't get to see our students on a daily basis. Day-to-day -day interactions let us know how overwhelmed our students may or may not be. Now that the learning is distance, balance the experience of your students. Try not to overload. Remember, in a school, students have resources, but at home, there is not always the resources or space to accomplish what you are looking for working with colleagues, and even creating experiences that can be completed at a student's own pace, you can create a more meaningful impact that helps a student have a more meaningful and enjoyable learning experience. And I believe there are some subtitles there for that video. Yes. <laughs> uh, and if you advance again, the script is there. Yes. And you can keep advancing. All right, and next slide. So three things I really want you to remember from that video that every empathetic educator knows are we don't get to see our students on a daily basis and that is difficult for them and that is difficult for us also we must not try to overload them with work and finally 
before you create an assignment, remember that students do not always have the resources or space to accomplish what you are looking for. Next slide. We need to realize that we are not delivering instruction and we are not redesigning instruction. What we are actually doing right now is designing new instruction. We should not be trying to pick up where we left off. What we should be doing is creating active lessons for our students. Next slide. As I've talked to students, there is one thing that they have in common. The experience at home is more complicated than we've imagined. I have heard stories where mom is trying to work from home. Next slide. And sister is still doing her online lessons. Sometimes it's a music lesson. Uh, brother is a reluctant learner, but there is one computer and he has to wait to use it, but it will not, he will not use it for school. And dad, who was originally the only person working from home, now has to compete with all of these voices. So many of this situation exist. The empathetic educator must now recognize that as we are asking students to complete assignments, this is the world they now exist in. Um, I, I have a coworker who is posting the work every morning at 8 a.m., but he then removes it at 3 p.m. because he wants us to make sure that students visit the sites. If they do not visit uh, Google Classroom by three, they will not receive credit. Many of our students, however, are not living by eight to three rules. They're waiting for a computer, caring for or competing with siblings, or they just don't have a strong internet connection at all. Asking for students to play by day-to-day -day rules is unreasonable and could ultimately alienate our most reluctant learners. So we must be empathetic. An empathetic educator uses a student's environment. It is really easy in a time like this to send out digital worksheets. But what we are doing there is creating passive experiences. An empathetic educator, however, has the opportunity to send out challenges uses, that use a student's environment. We want the learning to be active, and that is our goal, to create active experiences. So one of the best things an empathetic educator can do is use the student's environment. I want to share a great example of how I chose to use a student's environment. When we moved to distance learning, one of my classes was studying nonfiction writing. So when we moved to distance learning, I got an amazing idea. Instead of nonfiction prompts, why not have the kids apply the rules to their environment? So instead, I asked my students to create a video or podcast where they could apply the rules of nonfiction. Here is an example. And if you go to the next slide, you can pl play that podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to From so, the We have the opportunity as teachers to connect with students with their environment and create true moments of learning in the process. This was more interesting for this student than any writing prompt I could have developed, any essay she could have written, and it allowed her to have a real moment of connection with her mother. Next slide. What I am doing here is leaning into what kids know. These are not moments where we ask kids to move to us. Empathetic educators should move to the kids. We want to use what they are comfortable with, what they use as community, and the areas where they feel ownership and mastery. Next slide. 
what is great about creating assignments where students create, you can post those assignments and have students connect. For me, I use Google Classroom. Although we are distance learning, one goal is to create connection. And by creating assignments where we can hear and see each other, we can post those assignments and we can uh, facilitate connections. Many of our students live in a social media world. Empathetic educators, really all educators. Oh. I think that started a little high. Um, but so empathetic educators must recognize students do not only live in a real world, every student speaks and lives online in a unique way. This is an, uh, another opportunity to create connection. When we left, we were exploring narrative, something we asked so many of our students to explore. Knowing this, uh, one thing that I asked my students to do was create narrative films that used our in-class lessons to demonstrate understanding. Here's an excellent example of a ninth grade student, Julia, and how I used both her real world and social media world to create a demonstration of learning. Now we can play that video. Remember me. Though I have to say goodbye, remember me. Don't let it make you cry. For even if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart. I sing a secret song to you. Each night we are apart. Remember me. Though I have to travel far, remember me. Each time you hear a sad guitar, know that I'm with you the only way that I can be. So again, one of the ways we can do this is to steer into our students' strengths. Right now, our kids know TikTok. You do not need to know TikTok to create a or, and post an assignment that uses the tools with which kids are familiar. Selfies, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat are all languages kids speak. They are opportunities to engage students in the learning process. So, next slide. During this time, it's important to remember our students are all also carrying around devices that do amazing things. A smartphone camera is a powerful tool and with an iPhone or iPad, we can use image and visual literacy to take passive activities and make them active. If you wanna play this video, and I think Yulia put subtitles on it as well. <laughs> So many places in a home can be a science lab. Using the slow motion or time lapse feature on many mobile cameras, have students capture a process. This could be an amazing science lesson, which students submit with an explanation. But it could even be a great writing prompt. Create your own time lapse or slow motion and ask students to use it as a creative writing story prompt. Uh, I just want to show you an interesting idea. Uh, it's, I think it's the next slide. Um, a student had for a TikTok documentary where she used not only the camera, but the data that is collected by an iPhone to create a project. And I want you to think of the way you might be able to harness her creativity. Go ahead. My screen time has went up like 60% since last week. And yeah, it's probably not good the amount that I'm using my phone. 
going on TikTok and watching Instagram videos on my phone. So being quarantined has definitely had an impact on most people's lives regarding social media and technology. And I'm sure if you go look at your screen time on your phone, it'll have gone up. So I want to share a tweet that I saw Friday morning. I think out of everything, this is the most important ingredient to creating a culture of empathetic educators. It said, was just told by my district, whatever we plan for our first week of online teaching, we should have it, and then we should have it again for realistic expectations. I want to take us back to this slide for a minute. Remember, our job is not just to prepare. <laughs> um, remember, our job is not to prepare our students for learning our curriculum, um, it, we, we are also a place of socio-emotional learning. Our job is not just to teach curriculum, it is to find ways to connect students to their classmates, to their support system, to their environment. Yes, we are teachers, but we are in our own way on the front lines. We have the ability to make sure that although many of our students are confined, that they have the opportunity to grow, to connect, to look to the future, and see the possibility each one of us has. By being empathetic and creating these connections and opportunities, we can do that. Now, I want to close by take, talking not just to teachers, but also to administrators. And I want to create not only a community of empathetic educators, but also empathetic administrators. So hit me to that last slide. Send me there. Let's see. Here we go. Um, so if your teachers unexpectedly find themselves in a distance learning situation, it will be st a stressful situation, but they will rise to the occasion. As an administrator, however, there is one thing you can do that will go farther than anything else. Ask them how they are and mean it. Don't send a million links. Don't send a million dates. Don't send a million emails. Recognize that the teachers who normally answer questions all at once about content are now answering them one by one, quadrupling the work. And recognize that the tech and PD coaches are now getting 10 times the number of emails they were getting before. Recognize that your admin is overwhelmed and creating order where there was none. An empathetic administrator will continually motivate and cheer on the staff and delegate the dissemination of information in manageable bits. So don't ask your staff to go above and beyond because they already are. Trust me. Thank you so much for listening to me today. Thank you, thank you very much, Anthony. Um, please stay put because we'll, we will have some Q&A session uh, at the end sure. of the webinar. Uh, however, there is one comment. Uh, we had some background music playing on one of the slides. Yes. And the people have <laughs> enjoyed it so much, they're asking for the, <laughs> for the name will of try the to I will try to find out. <laughs> I'll try to find out. I'll, I'll email my students right now. <laughs> okay. 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 So hopefully by. The